Hi, my name is Heather Alicia Sims. I'll be reading from Stories of the Saints by Carrie Wallace, illustrated by Nick Thornborough. I'll be reading from Jerome. Jerome. Jerome lived 347 to 420. Location, Rome, Bethlehem. Emblem, lion, skull, trumpet, owl, books, and writing. Patron of archeologists, translators, librarians, libraries, students, anger management. Feast day, September 30th. When Jerome was a boy, his parents sent him to school in the big city of Rome. His parents had raised him as a Christian, but when Jerome got to Rome, he discovered that he loved parties and pagan books by writers like Cicero. After Jerome finished school, he and his friends set out to travel the world. But when they arrived at Antioch in Greece, they all fell sick and Jerome's friends died. Then Jerome had a terrible dream. He was standing before a judge in heaven, surrounded by people who shone with light. Who and what are you? The judge asked Jerome. I am a Christian, Jerome said. You're lying, the judge told him. You are a follower of Cicero, not Christ. Wherever your treasure is, that is where your heart will be. The judge ordered that Jerome be beaten. And as the blows rained down on him, Jerome began to beg for mercy. So did the people who surrounded him. Have pity on his youth, they cried. Give him time to repent. I promise I'll read the books of God, Jerome cried. When he woke up from the dream, his face was covered with tears and his back was blue with bruises. Jerome kept the promise he made in his dream and went out into the desert to learn about God. To build his library, he copied whole books for himself, writing them out page after page by hand. A few years later, he had learned enough to be ordained as a priest and the Pope called him back to Rome. But Jerome wasn't easy to get along with. He was a genius with words and languages, but he was impatient with anyone who wasn't. And he couldn't control his tongue, not even when he was talking about other priests. All they think about are their clothes, he said, and gossiping about rich women. Because he made fun of them, people made fun of Jerome, the way he walked, the way he talked, even the way he smiled. The Pope knew better than to put Jerome in charge of a congregation of people. So he asked Jerome to start translating the Bible into Latin so that all the people could read it. Jerome also taught women who were sick and tired of the riches and silliness of Rome. Paula, one of the women he taught, paid to build a monastery in Bethlehem for Jerome and a convent for the women he taught, as well as a free school and a hospital. For 30 years, Jerome worked in a cave outside town where he finished translating the Bible from Hebrew to Latin, wrote commentaries on scripture, and defended the faith from false ideas. Years after Jerome left Rome, it was invaded, and many of the people Jerome had known in Rome fled to Bethlehem. Even though he hadn't gotten along with them when he was in Rome, Jerome came out of his cave and left his writing behind to help them. We can't just speak words about God, he said. We must act them. When Jerome was an old man, a lion arrived at his monastery. The other monks were terrified. 
But Jerome noticed that the big beast was limping. So Jerome went up to it, lifted the lion's wounded paw, and removed a, thaw, a thorn from it. For the rest of Jerome's days, the lion followed him everywhere, just like a dog. It even slept at his feet while he was riding. And when Jerome died in his cave outside Bethlehem, the lion was still there guarding him. The end.